Hi debaters, this is part two of the 2021 Spartan Debate Institute topic introduction. In the first part, we discussed the process of federal government water policy. In this video, we'll explore likely affirmative and negative areas, as well as some predictions for how the topic will shape up. Just to review, here's the 2021-2022 resolution. Resolved, the United States federal government should substantially increase its protection of water resources in the United States. We'll discuss this in detail in our upcoming topicality series. For now, it's important to know that very few of the words in the resolution are terms of art, meaning that they have clear legal meanings. While there will be lots of topicality debates this year, the affirmative has a lot of latitude to define terms, and they'll find good AF definitions for most topicality debates. Instead, I think the main limit on the topic is the state's counterplan. The state's counterplan is a type of agent counterplan, meaning that the negative argues that the action of the plan is fine, but someone else should do it. They advocate for a different actor or agent. In this case, instead of having the United States federal government do the plan, the negative will argue that the 50 states, and sometimes the territories too, should themselves undertake plan action at the state level rather than the federal level. There are different versions of the state's counterplan, mostly based on the range or scope of what the negative fiats. For example, sometimes the negative will include that different states work together to coordinate action as part of this counterplan. Other times they'll argue the states should get expertise from others or that they should share costs. Each of these decisions will change how the counterplan works and how the affirmative responds to it. Before we examine how the state's counterplan influences affirmative choice on the water topic in more detail, it's worth learning a bit about how the federal role in water policy works and how it compares to the state role. Early America had essentially no federal role in water. States made their own policies and funded their own projects. They built canals, did their own flood management, and coordinated or occasionally fought with each other. However, when USACE was founded in 1802, as noted in part one, it started to take a role in water projects to meet army needs. Then in the early 1900s, the Western states needed help. The Bureau of Reclamation was founded and it started to take on big construction projects like the Hoover Dam. The New Deal again had federal involvement as it funded lots of federal water projects like the Tennessee Valley Authority. Then in the 1960s, the burgeoning environmental movement caused the federal government to start to get more involved in regulation of both the states and industry in terms of water quality and pollution. Currently, the model for the balance between the federal and state power is partnering with the states. States often collaborate with the federal government on local water projects. Additionally, federal regulations are generally a floor, not a ceiling. That means that states can have higher requirements, but not lower ones on things like drinking water and pollution control. That gives a lot of latitude for the negative to argue that the states should, have to, should do the affirmatives plan. To the extent that the states are not involved, it's generally because it's a federally owned item like a dam or fracking on federal lands or because the states can't afford it. To understand why and how the state's counterplan will shape the water topic, it's also helpful to understand why state's counterplans shape domestic topics generally. If you were to ask a policymaker why you'd want federal action in an area rather than state action, they'd probably say one or more of these things. We need a uniform or coordinated response. Different states disagree about how to approach this issue. The states don't want to act, or it's politically infeasible for the states to act with their current legislative makeup. The states don't have enough money to respond to this issue. Or finally, the states don't have relevant expertise on the issue in question. But in debate, none of these are reasons the federal government needs to act because the negative can fiat their way out of them. If the affirmative says we need a coordinated response, the negative will include in the counterplan text that the states will coordinate their actions. If the affirmative says different states disagree about how to approach this issue, in fact, a lot of water issues are based on allocations between different states where they have inherently contradictory approaches, the negative will just fiat that the states agree to the exact same policy. If the affirmative says the states don't want to act on this issue or it's politically impossible for the states to act on this issue, the negative will say that fiat means that the negative gets to argue the states should do the policy and debate about the outcome. The fact that the states won't do so isn't a response to the counterplan, any more than the fact that the United States federal government won't do the affirmative's plan right now is a response to the plan. If the affirmative says the states don't have enough money to deal with this issue, the negative will include a funding mechanism in the counterplan tax, perhaps an increase in taxes or a cut in an unpopular program, or include cost sharing measures where one state provides additional funds to cover for another state that is struggling economically. Finally, 
If the affirmative says the states don't have the expertise needed to solve this issue, the negative will include in the counterplan text that the states purchase expertise or that the federal government shares its expertise with the states. This means that affirmatives on domestic topics are almost always things that the states cannot do by reasons of federal jurisdiction, or the affirmative has an advantage that's based solely on federal action that isn't achieved by state action. These are often called process advantages because their advantage is based on the process of how the plan is done rather than the outcome of the policy itself. Sometimes the app will also have an advantage based on signaling or perception of other actors, like an argument that other countries will model federal policy, but not state policy. There will be more details on both the state's counterplan and affirmative answers in future uh, lectures and lab activities, but it's important to understand the basics of this concept so you can predict which acts will and especially won't be read on this topic. Because of the existence of the state's counterplan, a lot of good ideas that are topical aren't asked that will be read in debates, because even though there's a good reason to do them in the real world, they aren't strategic in debate because they can't beat the state's counterplan. The first question that affirmative researchers should ask themselves is, how does this an affirmative answer the state's counterplan? If the answer is, it's federal jurisdiction, or there's a federal process advantage, or we have an advantage about international modeling, you're probably on the right track. If the answer is, we need multiple states to work together, or we could have both the states and the federal government act at the same time, then you probably need to take another look at the app because it will struggle to beat states' counterplans in debates. Now that we've considered the state's counterplan and how it shapes the topic, you can start to predict likely AF areas. In terms of federal jurisdiction AFs, there are a whole lot of them, but this is a, a starter set. Indian water rights settlements or indigenous water AFs, we discussed in uh, potential versions of these in the first video, but there are a lot of options in this area. Marine protected areas are areas of the ocean where human activity is restricted to protect natural resources. AFs could expand existing MPAs or create new ones. Banning ocean drilling in the US uh, Exclusive Economic Zone or EEZ uh, is something that could be done by the affirmative. Drilling for oil in the oceans is controversial, especially in areas that are important habitats. Another app is banning fracking. Hydraulic fracturing, aka fracking, is the process of injecting high pressure liquid into rocks to force them open to extract oil or gas. It's very controversial, especially because it threatens water supplies in the area, and a good portion of the areas are federal lands, meaning the states can't uh, regulate the access to them. Also, as discussed in part one, the U.S. has agreements with both Canada and Mexico. These agreements could be renegotiated or new agreements could be put in place. Because they involve negotiations with a foreign country, they're generally federal only. In addition to the federal jurisdiction AFs, there are some AFs that might have process advantages. The Waters of the United States, or WOTUS AF, is the SDI packet AF and will be discussed in detail in a subsequent video. But this is an affirmative that's done by the Supreme Court and it has an advantage based on SCOTUS precedent. A state court decision or state legislative action would not solve that advantage. Other AFs will also have precedent advantages. A common blueprint is to have an AF have, uh, to, is to, give, to give an AF a federal key warrant is to have one advantage that's about the intrinsic benefit of the water protection, and the other advantage is about the precedent benefit of the AF. The state's counterplan would solve the first advantage, but not the second. You can expect to see a number of these this year. Agency AFs with agency process advantage is another blueprint for an affirmative. Again, one advantage is based on the value of the water resource protection, while the other is about the agency itself, giving it more power, changing the way it conducts business, etc. And the state's counterplan would struggle to solve that advantage. A final area to look at is AFs with signaling or modeling advantages. This could be relatively broad, but two that I've seen so far are a right to water affirmative that argues that declaring that Americans have right to water access could have two advantages. One based on the benefit of giving everyone water access, and the other based on the signal that the U.S. giving a right to water would send to other nations. The state's counterplan would solve the first advantage, but again, it would have more difficulty solving the second. Another AF with a signaling or modeling advantage is banning dams. An AF that bans dam construction on environmental grounds might also be modeled internationally. There would then be a debate about whether uniform state action would send that same kind of signal to other nations. This is just a brief set of likely affirmatives to give you an idea of how the topic could work with regards to the state's counterplan. For each F listed here, there are probably five or 10 more that have similar relationship to the states. The main thing to know for now is that each affirmative will have a reason that need to have a reason that the states cannot do it or why the state's doing it is bad. And these are examples of Fs that fall into those categories. Unfortunately, given the diversity of ways that water policy is enacted, as we described in part one of the video, and the large number of things that could fall under the banner of protection of water resources, there isn't really a unifying disadvantage this year. 
As with most topics that involve the state's counterplan, the federalism DA is likely to make a regular appearance. Additionally, many affirmatives will involve forms of regulation or rulemaking in the area of water, so disadvantages to regulation like business confidence, which argues that new and especially unexpected regulations cause business anxiety and hurt businesses' ability to plan, may be popular. There are also other economy disadvantages that argue that regulation stifles economic growth more generally. If the affirmative is enacted through one of the agencies described in part one of the video, there are also likely credibility or budget trade-off advantages. But again, they need to be specific to the agency the app uses. So there's not one unifying budget trade-off disadvantage due to the diffuse nature of water policy making. And of course, political disadvantages are always a likely response to the affirmative. And finally, there are other agent-specific disadvantages like courts dissats that can be read against courts apps. There are a number of counterplans that will be read on this topic. Here's an initial list to get you thinking about the kinds of arguments you'll encounter. You'll notice that there are a lot of process counterplans on this list. Because the water resources policy process is somewhat complicated and involves a lot of the parts of the government, there are many opportunities for the negative to enact the same or a similar policy through a different policy making process. In the area of agent counterplans, we've discussed the state's counterplan quite a bit already, but remember that there will be different variations in the counterplan based on likely app responses. The better the affirmative initial response to states, the more the negative will have to fiat in order to overcome it. The court's counterplan is also a likely option versus legislat legislative or agency affirmatives. Apps that use the legislative or executive branches will need to be prepared to respond to these types of counterplans, often with an agenda politics disadvantage as a net benefit. Similarly, apps that use the court's branch will need to respond to Congress counterplans, generally read with a disadvantage to the court's process. Executive order counterplans and agency counterplans. Many of, the, many of the apps on this topic can be done via an executive order or by the executive agency. The net benefit is generally an agenda politics disadvantage. Other process counterplans include negotiated rulemaking, also known as regneg. This is a counterplan that uses a negotiated process to formulate a regulation rather than having Congress or the agency dictate the rule. The net benefit is generally either politics, because there's less pushback from industry if they're involved in the process, or a regulation-based disadvantage like business confidence. The environmental review counterplan is a process counterplan that subjects the plan to environmental scrutiny before it is enacted. It's popular because it can be read against nearly any app. The National Governors Association counterplan is a counterplan that has the states threaten to not engage with the federal government unless the federal government does the plan. The net benefit is a version of the federalism DA called uncooperative federalism. It says the states acting against the federal government is good. Finally, the Constitutional Convention, or CONCON counterplan, is a process counterplan that says instead of having the federal government do the plan as legislation, the states should hold a constitutional convention and pass the plan as an amendment to the Constitution. The net benefit is generally agenda politics or another federal government process DA. There will also be a number of critique arguments on this topic. Some will be affirmative specific, while others will criticize all or a part of the resolution. This is just a brief list with very simplified explanations. You'll learn a lot more of these arguments as you research the topic. The settler colonialism critique is a critique based on the fact that the United States is a country that exists upon land stolen from Native Americans. It critiques federal government action, and this year, land use and so-called protection in particular. The capitalism critique is a critique based on arguing that the capitalist system is bad. A likely link argument this year involves treating water as a resource, which assumes that it's something to be exploited by capitalism. The anti-blackness critique is a critique based on the founding of America as a slave nation in opposition to blackness. Link arguments will be based on the use of the federal government, as well as so-called environmental protections that only benefit white Americans. The environmental justice critique is another race-based critique that can be read as part of a broader critique of anti-blackness or as a specific critique of the affirmative. It argues that environmental protections are never applied evenly. Instead, they can reinforce existing societal racism and inequality. Finally, the environmental security critique criticizes the way the affirmative represents the environment and particularly environmental impacts. By treating the environment as a security issue, it often causes militarized responses and resource wars, which the negative argues are bad. As discussed at the beginning of this video, most of the words in the resolution this year aren't terms of art. That means they aren't strictly defined in the literature in ways that are convenient for the negative for topicality debates. That said, there are a few topicality arguments worth briefly previewing, and we'll review these more in the future. In the U.S. topicality is a T argument read against apps that are about the ocean. There's a debate about whether protection of waters in the United States is inland waters only, 
or also includes territorial waters in the EEZ. There are various topicality arguments and versions of topicality based on which part of the ocean the AF involves. Protection means cessation of pollution is, is a topicality argument that says protection uh, means that an activity must cease. AF that build projects for water consumption like pipelines might not be topical. Protection means preserving and excludes restoration, argues that protection means keeping what already exists rather than recreating what was there before. Some invasive species or infrastructure cleanup apps might not be topical here. And finally, water is only fresh water, not oceans or groundwater, argues that water is defined as fresh water only. Affirmatives in the ocean would be excluded because that's salt water, and fracking would also likely be excluded because that's groundwater, not fresh water. Again, these are likely arguments, but not comprehensive lists. As you start researching and debating, you'll add to and refine these lists. In the meantime, I hope you have a summer of learning and a season filled with excellent debates against well-prepared opponents. Happy debating!